<laughs> Too late. I'm Don Kutzenmeister, and I've been keeping bees for a pretty long time, and I'm here to pretty much answer your questions, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. If you don't answer the question, you're not going to get an answer. So everybody has been down the road, and I'm not going to start at any particular place, but I make my own foundation, and I've got uh, some samples in here. I'm not here to sell you anything. You can compare the small cell bees to large cell bees. I brought a block of wax to show you that this is not extra, you know, fine refined plain water. This is uh, old uh, brood chamber, brown to dark brown. So everybody who tells you to put it through a filter, a coffee filter, you name it. Sheer curtains. I've got it all in my basement in a big roasting pan to show new students. This is the simplest way, and you get 100% of your wax. You get a couple five gallon buckets and some two and a half gallon buckets, and a strainer like the strainer spaghetti. You bring it up, boil it, you bring it up with four frames, no more than five. The more frames you put in there, there's too much to have to you know, squeeze out. I use a high tool. Once it goes through that string, you keep pressing it, you'll get a cake. Then you scrape that off, and when you get about a dozen cakes, then you put about two inches of water in a 20-quart kettle. Bring it up to a boil, pour it through a strainer just to take out stuff you missed the first time. This is basically the third milk with just water. It's not been bleached, it's dark cold. So if you're selling wax, that's $25 to $30 if it's chemical free. Now, anybody got questions on your backyard beekeeping, or how to make bees, or how to split, anything that comes in your mind, I'll hear, try to answer for you. Somebody got a smart interest in us? <laughs> <laughs> this is the three part. These are when you get to ask him questions. Let me ask you about your, uh, your YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. we look, do we look for under the fat bee man? It's listed, if you go to uh, DixieBeesupply.com, Dixie that's my web page. Uh, I sell vaporizers, I sell wax mills, and from there there's a link to our chat. We have a chat, we used to have them uh, every Saturday, but we went to every other week because I stay so busy. And between now and spring, I get a lot of calls to go to different bee clubs and speak to them. So, but if you go to YouTube, it's listed under the Fat Bee Man channel. It's based on common sense bee people. If it don't make sense when you hear it, then it's probably not true. I base my findings on stuff that I find in the woods. If it's not in the woods, in a tree with the bees, I'm not buying it, I'm not promoting it. We build all of our own stuff these are mating nukes, these are high top feeders, and we don't even make 10 frame, we make 8 frame and 5 frame. I brought these here, this is a design, we've made probably 20 different prototypes of feeders in the last 25 years. This one, my son designed for a person who doesn't have a chop saw or an angle saw, this is all 90 degree cuts. You can lay a board down with two C clamps and a, a handsaw and build this. You see, every bit of it is a 90 degree cut. So, people a lot of times say, you can build these fancy things because you've got all the tools. If you've got a skill saw, you can wrap a box. You know, just learning how to do it. And these are for make, making queens. I want you to see this stuff. These are many frames. These are all scrap that we make. This is what we use our scrap for. This put together, that's one medium frame. When you're doing these to make a living, you do numbers. So I've asked over there, people that have double beeps or, or uh, say 10 frame with a deep and a medium, how many splits could a normal person make? And the majority of the people will say, maybe two, three. If it's 20 frames, if it's eight or 10 frames of honey, 10 frames of brood and honey, you can make 15 splits out of it. 
we split with a queen cell, a right queen cell. Now these are set up for a cup of bees. These here frames are not drawn out. These we put together to, for the show. But when you got, get these here to draw them out, to draw these out, you put these in a medium box and you put a bar across like this. So this holds 16 frames, it goes on an 8 frame. If you're going to run 10 frame, you put 20, so that 40 frames. Now, when you put your queen cell in this, you put the queen cell that's right and a couple of bees, you make it clean. Simplest thing is that. No questions? Screw it. How do they accept her? I mean, you, it sounds like you're making a, a cake here. You're just throwing in the bees, a couple of bees, and a queen, and, and Basically, that's all it is. Queen oh, a queen cell. Okay. A queen cell. Oh, a queen cell. You see, the ideal situation when we take our, our boxes or our hives to start these, we'll set three or four hundred of these up. And the best thing to do is you get three students. First student comes and pulls the box out, pulls the queen out. The second student puts a queen cell back in. Third student takes a five gallon bucket with about a third full of bees. We go to an eight frame hive. That's all we use. We shake about six frames of bees in there. And then a cup of bees, literally, in each one. A cup of bees is about 300 bees. It takes 10 to 12 bees to keep that cell warm. The things that I tell you are hard to believe. Because, yes? You don't put any honey or coffee or uh, brood in there? You don't need brood. Why do you need brood? That's a good question. All right, standard practice. There's backyard beekeeping, there's commercial beekeeping. If you took a 10 frame hive and typically you split it down the middle and do a walk away, if luck is on the bad side, that one don't come back. That 10 frame hive, I could make 20 bone splits. And then if I lost half of them, I'm still ahead. Well, it depends. If you live in, the, in South Georgia, we can do it 11 months. I live in North. I moved up to the mountains. We usually start in March. Sometimes we can do it in February. Our, our sign is February. Red maples, pollen coming in, we can start. But you got to have drones. So we go South Georgia, shake bees. We usually bring up two to 300 packets of bees twice, three times a month. Half of them go in our bee yard as a school. The other ones are for students to resell. So, if you're going to do bees, in the, yes? Real quick, Don. I tried uh, mating nukes this year. Mm -hmm. I've got the small ones. I did a couple of bees per. I had a problem. I don't know if I had them too close together or what, but they all ended up going into one. But that's the question. And do they have to be so far apart, or how far apart do you have to make them? Have you seen any of my videos? I've seen a lot of videos. <laughs> Why do you think all of my hives are all different colors? So well, they recognize the hive. I just chose. How would you find me if you want to come and see me? Yeah. I didn't you know if they were smelling it or what. You find me by an address. Yeah. GPS. If the bees are in the air and they're flying around, I know just about everybody who's had bees a year has sat in a chair, watch bees coming in their hives. On a windy day, drifting back and forth. You have a hive stand here, hive stand here, and all of them in a nice pretty row. Beautiful picture. They're all white. The bees get confused. If they're different colors, they're going to go to the right one better. Then they go by smell once they get by the landing board. Yes? Does that, does that cut down raiding and a lot of that by doing it that way? Raiding or robbing? Yeah, robbing. Well, because I've had that problem with mine is because, uh, and if they get any air gaps in them, I lost the 10 frame because of that. I thought that it was highly active and everything, but they were actually coming from every place raiding it. But if you paint every one of them a different color, because I painted all of mine now just about the same color, I should go back and paint every one of them a different color. I'm not telling you what to do. 
I paint mine different colors because of identity. I have people come to me, show me their bee, their bee yard. Picture perfect, beautiful. They use a string, pull them in a the line. The bees drift. Robbing? I can talk about robbing and everybody wants to get upset. When robbing goes on in my yard, I do the opposite of what you do. I have a 55 gallon barrel with a feeder line. You've probably seen it in my videos. It runs down through my yard. I open the valve up and I feed. In our out yards, if there's robbing, what do you think I do to stop it? So in other words, if I put an alternative food source for them, they are more likely to use it rather than rain from any place else, right? More than likely. Well, I wonder because I did put rock and something together and then put... Everybody I mean, has a different way to do things. Okay. Like I said, a lot of things I tell you, you scratch your head, it's crazy, it ain't gonna work. In a bee yard, we have bee yards in South Georgia, we yeah. got around Lula, up around uh, Gainesville, we got bee yards. 50 to 75 hives to a bee yard. If we go there and start shaking bees, we go down the line, we'll pull one frame, two frames here, the next box, one, two frames out of that, they go into one cage. If they start getting weak, they start robbing, how do you think we stop robbing in the bee yard? <coughs> Have any ideas? Use the entrance. Take the entrance, but take the lid off. The bees over here robbing, they go home and protect their house. These over here go and protect their house. Within five minutes, the stops. Off your house, yes. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> now that's as simple as it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody's got, you know, the ways they do things. Usually when bees are robbing, we use a 22-inch bottom board. And on the bottom board is a landing board. You'll see bees, they're hooking each other together and they're spinning around. That's usually a sign of robbing. Or you'll see dead bees in front of a hive. I saw the last time I saw that was that I had a, one bee tried to get in there. They normally, I think, there was, I'd say, six to eight bees on that one bee, and they just kept pushing him over the lip until they fell out of the one. That's the first time I'd ever seen bees actually protecting the eye. When you see bees fighting and dropping dead, out <coughs> there, what I've learned in many years of keeping bees, bees, they got undertaker bees. Bees die in here or get killed or mad or anything. Yeah. The bees get a hold of that bee and they fly out three, four hundred yards and drop them. When you start seeing bees at the bottom of your hive, your population is dropped. They're going to take the shortest place and drop it there. Okay, that's when it's weak. Um, anybody got questions on? Yes. Back to spins. Mm -hmm. How do you get these uh, queen cells? How are you doing making them make queen cells? Two things the beehive does. Yeah. What do they do? <coughs> what do they do? Honey? Honey? Population. Population. One or the other causes swarming. Yeah. Once you have swarming, we encourage it. I cut cells because they're a better queen than grafting. Yeah. Now, if you confine it to a single story with a high top feeder, you feed them, they're going to be either full of honey, they're going to get through. Bees only do those two things. People try to make everything too confusing. Yeah, you're talking about 15 splits out of this out of this hive, how do you get that many queen cells in there? That's, what, that's my question. Every frame in there, and I'm sure every DP frame during has opened the hive that they haven't been in for a while. Pull a frame out, wow, there's 10, 10 cells. You got a 10 frame box, you're going to have five frames and have cells on them. Eight frame and five frame is your best. And for women and people who's got a bad back, do mediums. 
We sell our dates, five frame date, 175. The medium, 175. We stack three mediums up, and that's a combination. We can sell it three to four times a month. You learn the tricks. Every one of you should be selling enough bees out of your own bee yard to pay for your stuff, your hobby. That's why I'm here, to try to help you. They only do two things. Now, if you want to make honey, man, you got a strong hot. Now you do this on a fence. You're always borderline. They're all ready to swarm all the time. And when they swarm, there's enough bees in two boxes or three boxes, or if you stack them like some people, 10 high. You're going to lose enough bees to set up 100 boxes. Bees are not like antlers on a wall. Keep them at minimum. Yes? Bee keeper error. What is it? <laughs> it's called tinkeritis. There's all kind of gimmicks in there. Keep it simple. Feed the bees. Make sure they got a place. I don't run screen bottom boards. People that run screen bottom boards, more than like, they're going to have a wax moth problem because they're not watching their hive. The hive swarms. The wax moth eggs get built up under their little insert they put in there. So. Everything is usually caused by the beekeeper. They live in the woods. There ain't no metal lids. See, no metal lids. We threw those away 40 years ago. No inner covers. No inner covers? You have inner covers? I don't have to look at your hive. You got ants, roaches, and hive beetles. Yeah. You create a place for them to live. You put that lid on there. That's why I use telescoping lids. Hit one corner, it comes off. They seal it up. Nothing gets in or out. So yes? Speaking of hive beetles, mm -hmm. you've got some kind of wall inside there that beetles on it. I asked for questions. You want to kill them? Yes. Yeah. Swiffer sheets. Okay. <laughs> There's a right and a wrong way to put the swiffer sheet in. This is a data. I'm not proud of it, but I put a lot of videos on YouTube to show people. There's always a reason for everything. That is hive beetles small high beetles. There's a smooth side and there's a rough side. Put the rough side up, five frame, eight frame, ten frame, whatever you want. And then change them out. This one's been in probably, you want to go in there 14 days. Uh, 14 days you're doing two different things. You're going through the hive, you check for, for queen cells, you change this out. Because see, if this one here has got propolis on it. After 15, 16 days, they start to propolize it in. And we run entrance reducers on every hive. So, How big an opening? I like 3 8 high. And mm -hmm. I like in the summertime, if I'm pulling packages, because you don't pull a package of these, either two pound or three pound, out of one hive. You might pull out of four hives or five hives. But you come back to this hive and you pull three, four packages a week out of it. Okay. You have to rotate. I'm trying to show people things that they don't normally see because most commercial beekeepers don't want to show you that. How, how do the swiffer sheets work? They just, they, uh, they can't get off of them? They get their little hairy bodies up in there and get stuck. You want to look at Anything I got up here, if you want to come up and look at, you feel free. I've, I've brought a sheet of foundation that we mill and commercial, so you can say side by side, see the cell size. We do not treat for trachea mites. And we use oxalic acid. Swiffer sheets, unscented swiffer sheets. Oxalic drip or vapor? Everybody has got their own thing. I personally do not like the drip. It kills bees. Vapor, you need to do at least three in August. If you don't do your treatments in the summer, by November, November's the bees that's going to be in the springtime. And once you got those mites in there, then you got problems. Three a week apart? Yes. 
You cannot over-treat. I, I have uh, email conversations with a lot of people in Europe. I try to pass on my findings and what I do to people. Yes? Do, do you only treat once a year or more than once? These have to be treated. I mean, what's your schedule? My schedule? What we do is when we put packages in, we treat seven to ten days afterwards. We took the vaporizer and we vaporized. Now, there's a lot of ways to put oxalic acid in there. Uh, Randy Oliver's got some stuff with uh, Everclear and oxalic acid, LaFogger. Yes, it's fast. It's not as effective. I don't recommend dribbling because you contaminate brood. I brought this dead out basically to show you what frames look like, a natural draw. We start out most of the time with star strips. You see my high tool. And those, I'm working a little bit on them. This one hasn't been worked a little bit. But you see how it comes out. I see people come to my bee yard with these crowbars this big. <laughs> if you want to make a living doing bees, you do this. You see how I got it out? We usually get them out a lot better, but this has been sitting a while. And I brought it up here. Most everybody's seen the dead out. How many would reuse this frame? You know how you can tell if it's a good frame? Anybody want to look at it? This is how you go look. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Look at it. I'm not being hoodoo in you. I think it's scary. I want you to look at the frame and tell me why you would use it or why you wouldn't. And if you look at this frame, you can tell a lot about the frame. What? I'm not all that good. I would have burned that one. What? Yeah, I thought there was been some like scared and I was putting something back in my hive and killed it. If you, you, if you yeah. used it in that same year, the trees again? No. No. How do we rework that thing? If you put that in a hive in the same year that it came out, the bees would work. The only reason you wouldn't use it is if it has excessive drone. Has that got excessive drone? No. If you could take a dollar bill, fold it in half, cover up your brood, your drone, it's a good health hive. Now, if you want to tell you if the queen is good, oh, yeah. you look at the comb. That will tell you if the queen is good. You mean in terms of laying yeah. pattern all the time? Oh, yes. Yeah. Failing. Oh, uh, so, yeah. But, but this one, you can tell it's in wall to wall. What out of the infection? I get confused between balls and hills. Which has the lead to the hive? Go to the ground. These. Those. And it's not. Well, I think I'm, I tried something. But my mentor said that take at least four frames out and set barely on the set. You know, like a little raw. You guys, the rest of these guys can't hear or see what you're saying. If anybody has not seen a field, these are dead. You can come up and look at them. You can take a few home. <laughs> no, thank you. I've got my own thing. Fresh ones. If you look at the comb, yes? Would I reuse it? I personally don't. Why? You make your own foundation. That, I mean, that helps a lot. Do you see wax moth on this? No. no. Would you bet money there's no wax moth eggs here? No. no. Why? You're going to use it? Well, freeze, freeze it first. It, why not freeze it? 
There's bugs, and there's there's a lot of things you have to freeze them or burn before they reproduce. You're going to put this in your wife's freezer? You're going to get a divorce. <laughs> if you pull the starter uh, wedge bar off right now, and I'll do it if you got a pocket knife, you can look up underneath it, you're going to see black pepper. That's eggs going to come out of the spring. Uh-oh. There you go. <laughs> You don't want to ever use a knife that's real sharp. That is a sharp. <laughs> sharp enough to cut you. Okay. It's just it's brown. It's brown. Get out of the way. <laughs> Whenever you take a frame and use a knife on it, be careful you don't lift the grain up. If you're going to sell beads, queens, you get a sliver under your fingernail, you're not catching queens for a while. Now, everybody should be able to sell bees. Get used to working your bees without gloves. Right, I'm going to lay this up here so everybody can look at it. Now, I'm going to pull the the starter here, the wedge bar up. Now, if you want to come up here and look, you can see. There's your wax moth eggs right here. See it? Yeah. Come on up and look. There it is. There he is, a good cone right there. And everybody was going to use it. <laughs> you have to Now here is the comb that I pulled out. When you judge your comb, the top is going to have one to three inches of honey. If this is stretched out more than a half inch to three quarters of an inch, I don't use it. As far as, we got drone comb right here. To take a dollar bill and fold it in half and cover, that is acceptable. You have to have drones in the hive. If you have no drone comb in there, you got a hive that's going to be very ill at me. Same thing in a nursing home. But all the women in a nursing home, they're grouchy. But if you've got two men in there, it knows everything else. Now, the next thing you do is you don't look straight on at the cone. See, everybody looks straight on. Look down the rows of cone. They should be in straight rows, not wavy. See how straight those are? Yes. Yeah. Nobody tells you that. I'm here to educate you. Great rows means you got a good food. Now, do you know how to tell when your hive's going to swarm ahead of time? Anybody? That's too long. No, I mean, I, I, I managed to save. But oh, I yeah. Took, I took that plane out and put it in another hive. They get grumpy. <laughs> Just out of blind luck, not a... Does anybody learn to <laughs> Yes. All right. If you got a frame, you got a hive, I don't care if it's a five frame, an eight frame, a ten frame. You know how you tell if you've got a queen that's fading? Take a frame. Let me get this over here. <coughs> an empty frame. It's got a five. Take the empty frame, a full-size frame, <coughs> drop it in the middle. Go back in three weeks. What will you find? <coughs> new comb. If it's all yeah, right. Comb. I hear new comb. What else? What else? <coughs> <coughs> three weeks. Queen cells. They ain't profit. Here's what I've learned over the years. And maybe I'm wrong. You take a frame and put it in there, and they draw all the way down, clear down like this. Worker cells, good clean. Half of the frame is drone comb. What do you think? They're telling you three weeks we're leaving. 